we should be live. Talk for me, Tate. Uh, yeah, how's it going, everyone? All right, that should be picking you up as well. Awesome. We are here for week nine of uh, TSC versus AR. Week nine match, TSC AR. This is going to be very, very hype. These are both two teams, um, somewhat middle of the pack. Um, it's looking really, really good, though. Uh, AR, unfortunately, I uh, believe coming off of a loss, and TSC um, looking to continue, I mean, well, go back into uh, a winning uh, percentage. I believe they're three and five right now. Um, so trying to kind of salvage it, um, and then I believe Acid Rabbits is four and four, it looks like. Okay. Do we have audio? It seems um, to be I... picking it up. Oh yeah, you want me to double check? Yeah. Yeah, I'll double check. Make sure my browser isn't broken because I don't hear anything. Okay. Oh, oh, Landry says we hear you. My browser's broken. Cool. Yeah. Oh, you know what? It probably is the wrong sound output. Oh, I know gotcha. what it is. Cool. Well, looks there like they... it is. Got it. I'm coming through as well. Awesome. Okay, first going pick into pick band. Yeah, love the first pick thrash. Very yeah, exciting. Thrash is in a really good spot right now. Oh yeah, like just got the buff. Matchups, but it is um, good nonetheless. Wh what was the change that was added recently that they uh, gave him? Q cooldown. Q cooldown. And some other like changes just to remind people that he was there. Morgana responds immediately. A traditional yeah. Thresh lane counter, but um, Thresh's hook cooldown much shorter than Morgana's <laughs> e come mid and late game. Okay, looking like a Satanial Nocturne jungle. Gonna be juicy. Loving to see it. Uh, how do you feel about Nocturne jungle? Do you think picking it this early is is a little bit dangerous because they can play around countering yeah, in it? In terms of team composition, yes. Um, but yeah. Comfort always trumps everything else. As I got yeah, the response probably. pretty good into Nocturne, unless he uh, can press the shield before the feathers come back True. also note the triple ban towards vid the mid they are quaking in the gotta rooms. respect it gotta respect it vid has been on a tear every time he's on one of these comfort picks he just looks so so good uh so you love to see that they're kind of recognizing that um vid maybe not feeling great about it but uh could end up if it looks good could end up picking a a soul i know he's been um uh, playing that a lot um, oh, yeah, it's but if... in so far. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, not banned, not to... But if it goes to the second round, it probably ends up getting banned, right? They probably continue their choice to continue banning out Vid. There it is. Sedge. The Sedge yeah, they, response. They here, and the... Sure. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. If, if Asol gets to next round, it's just going to get banned out. I uh, mean, so, I mean... Asol on its own with two supporting cast people. It's going to feel pretty good, although the Thrash yeah. is pretty good in Day Soul as well. They ban out the Yone, which has been BTL's counter, like almost every single game to counter the Asol. They've been picking the BT, uh, the, the Yone. The only other um, one that they have picked into an Asol was Tristana, so Yone getting taken away. Pretty good idea. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I played against the Tristana, yes. Yeah, every other ASL matchup, at least counter pick wise, has been uh, a Yone. Oh Just man! To remember, double eighty carry ban. I mean, there are plenty of eighty carries to choose from at this point. Yeah. Varus is good here. Ash is good here. Gonna be a Swain potentially. It's very magic damage heavy. They're gonna need something top lane potentially to balance yeah. out. Swain. Okay. I uh, I do like the that Swain. Kind of makes, but... like a Cassidy in mid and angle mm -hmm. here, I think. Mm -hmm. Um. Heavy magic. I, I 
I believe this probably is a Swain in the bot lane, right? They've yes, played it, it multiple is. times, yeah. Unless they're making vid go bot again. Unless they're swapping, yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, it might not be a horrible idea for Asol's, uh, you know, getting a little bit of protection um, going in the bot lane in the 2v2. The only issue is there's a lot more pressure and you're just dying. Uh, but with the Morgana, you know, that pressure gets uh, taken away a little bit. Going to be the Irelia as the response. Looking like a strong pick. Um, assuming that's going to go mid, yeah. And the Mordekaiser top um, could be a potential as well. Uh, would it be... I mean, I don't know if... I think they have trouble killing a lot of the traditional bruisers. Top yeah, I was just thinking that. Olaf, Warwick, mm. Darius, Jax. That, those would all feel like good picks here, I think. Mm -hmm. Feels pretty good, too. Yeah. Able to win that ISO matchup. Um, and if Camille sure ults anybody at any point. Aurelia Mordekaiser. Or, or uh, Aurelia Camille. Mm -hmm. They've got really good picks. Once they've hit level 6, and they've got good late game team fighting with Swain and Aesol. Honestly, I, I kind of like the idea. The identity comp, right? You're going to get the picks with the Aesol, the Nocturne, and the Camille uh, the vast majority of the time. Uh, but it's going to look pretty good as long as they can scale into 30 minutes um, if they uh, end up getting that far. I mean, Aesol E and Aesol Ult will be the entire area of a Camille um, ult hex, so if uh, that combo ever happens uh, past 30 minutes, that is a guaranteed kill, and could turn into a Baron pretty easily, depending on what happens after, but looking really, really good so far. Uh, going into the actual draft, gonna get started here soon. Oh, I didn't update this uh, overlay. Where is it? <laughs> Um, yeah, going into this, this is the nerfed ASOL that just came out today. Um, they nerfed ASOL. They did. Oh, thank God. <laughs> they did nerf ASOL. Um, I can double check what that is real quick. Um, mm -mm. Okay. I think it's hilarious how you can just type in patch notes into Google and you'll get League. <laughs> yeah, so it's the health growth and armor growth are both nerfed. Um, and then the damage on his Q is nerfed as well. Um, it won't really matter... Um, for Aesol a ton on his Q, because once you have that many stacks, right, it you're really just going to be doing infinite damage once you have the Archangel Staff, once you have the Rod going. Um, so you just get another proc, and it basically is the same thing over a fight. But early, it's going to it's gonna hurt a lot. I guess it's pre, pre 20 sure, minutes. But what I really wanted to see mm -hmm. changed for Aesol was him being uh, his uh, E channel, whatever he uses to get around. Mm -hmm. Movement wise, oh, the fly, the W. Yeah, yes. It's not blocked by any soft CC, any flow, yes. nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, Damage. I mean, any yeah. Way. I don't. I don't know if me at me personally. I don't know if I would love to see if it gets canceled by a. Uh, by just any piece of damage, because it'd be no. really, really hard that, for him to do it anything. Used to be. That, that's yeah. How they changed it and nerfed him into the ground, but I think there's a middle ground between yeah. him not being cancelled by Jarvan ulting on him and <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll I'll say at least like if there is a world where they did make that change where his W just gets stopped by damage, he would die so much more often just from any gank, which super sucks for him because he already dies from ganks super easily. Um that is obviously if you wait your CC out. Good. Um yeah, but kill, <laughs> kill Asol. 
Uh, yeah, so we we did talk about this being the Swain Bali, and he's played it before. He does like it. Uh, and with the Morgana combo, I actually love seeing this. One of the issues that Swain will have eventually is if he's not rushing that Rylize, he cannot perma stay on top of every character in the game. So with the Morgana shield now being a uh, factor, he can stay on those carries uh, as needed for a lot longer. Um, the only issue I see happening here is him potentially losing to uh, Mordekaiser, right? If he gets ulted, gets thrown into the Mordekaiser realm, um, he doesn't win that 1v1, right? He doesn't outheal for a really, really long time. Um, especially if if they're even, or... Yeah, even if like Swain and Mordekaiser are even, if they're in the realm 1v1, Swain ult's going, Mordekaiser's still losing... Or, uh, uh, Swain's still losing. He just doesn't outheal the, the Mordekaiser isolated damage. Uh, so they're gonna have to make sure that... They're putting the black shield on the right target here in team fights, um, and that they're calming, you know, on, on TSC side, that they're calming um, who to Mordekaiser ult. Usually it's going to be the, the Ace ult or the Swain, but uh, I could understand if maybe Nocturne or Camille is sitting in your back line. You just got to get them off your Zaya so the Zaya can actually play the game for a little bit there. Um, that would be understandable as well. I do wonder, I, I I assume that they're going to have enough, you know, peel and CC uh, regardless, but it is always nice to have that safety net if you need the Mordekaiser Realm. And going into, I mean, you're obviously the support main here. How do you think Swain Morg Zaya Thresh looks early game. Are they going to be going for a lot of trades? Is there going to be any uh, 2v2 kills going on? The spellcasters are always pretty good in lane. Mm -hmm. um, but Zaya should theoretically have the lane advantage. We'll just have to see how well the Q poke comes out because mm -hmm. it's the big thing we end up seeing mm -hmm. in those lanes. And prediction is, uh, is over. Um, who are you predicting to take this win? Now that we have a minute remaining, what's your what's your uh, prediction here? If you had to take a a guess, a shot in the dark, if you will. Sorry, I had to deal with someone at the door real quick. Oh, all good. What were you asking? Uh, yeah, oh, we're going into game pretty soon. I was going to ask, who are you predicting to win this? Uh, I like Acid Rabbit's comp a little bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I gotta say I'm a huge, huge fan of Swain. Love watching Swain anytime he's in game. But uh, if if I'm betting anything, I'm betting TSC is taking this. Uh, not to be the contrarian, but uh, I just love the idea that Javi's on this mid Irelia, gonna be looking super, super clean, looking good on mostly everything he plays, right? Uh, so I'd love to see how he ends up handling this ASOL mid. Hopefully Vid can, you know, not get uh, solo killed in this venture, but uh, would love to see how Javi, how Javi does on this Irelia. Uh, something I, I don't think we've seen him on this season yet. Um, and then, of course... Plobe going on the Mordekaiser loves these bruisers that can still carry coming out of top lane. Um, but going into a Camille, I'm not super, super uh, familiar with Camille versus Mordekaiser lane. Um, but they did pick the Camille into it, so maybe Coco knows something. It could be a comfort pick or it could be a counter. Maybe he knows something that we don't. Awesome. All right, getting into game. Uh, what time are you at? 11, 12, 13? Um, yeah, I just clicked the plus button over and over and over until I'm caught up. Just making sure. All cool. Right. Let me get my spectator stuff all settled. Love it, love it. Control shit Z. O N. Yeah, what's the, what's the, um, Shortcut for objective timers. Uh, N. N. Awesome. 
Just some dancing going on the mid lane. You love some good old dancing. I know that they did oh, scumbag. The auto canceling. Yes. Yeah, just for the first strike. Yeah. <laughs> I can That's see very... it in his dragon eyes. <laughs> oh no. Now they this is also on the jungle change, right? Oh, they just let him walk in and get the ward. Okay. I mean hey. A lot, a lot of uh, good sportsman-like conduct going on here. They're uh, just going to let them do that one for free. Take the five gold. Um, yeah, this is on the changed jungle patch, right? So full clearing is going to be, you know, oh. more favorable. Okay. Nice little start there. We'll see how much damage the AR bot lane is able to get on the backside. Able to trade back roughly equal, but Swain's going to be chugging potions. No ghosts taken. And oh. there's your uh, lane advantage nullified. Yeah. Poof. I, I do wonder if they pressed it a little harder. Um, Morgana obviously dropping the ignite. Uh, I wonder if there was an opportunity to actually get that kill. Pika Pika really going super, super low there, so... There was an opportunity, and especially because Swain had the E, but I believe they used it in the first engage, so it just wasn't uh, a real chance. Oh, Plobe hitting two first, uh, getting a good chunk out. Huge E landing. Pika getting the Q and the first blood, going over to the Thresh. You'll love the support getting your first blood. That's absolutely uh, a beautiful, beautiful uh, fight there for them. Yeah, you'll uh, love to see the first blood go into the Thresh. <laughs> That's a Thresh classic. Yeah. That's the most Thresh thing there ever was in-game, honestly. Being set up in the top lane. We might see a flash come out. Nope, not quite enough for it. Okay. Should be no problem here. Uh, oh, back gonna get cancelled. Okay. Just gonna try and get some farm with the Q anyway. Oh, Satanio's gonna back. Regardless, I guess, you know, his whole top side is taken. It would take quite a while to path all the way down bottom again. Uh, but, I mean, that is kind of what happens, right? I mean... 3-6 is not going to do a lot uh, with ganks um, unless they don't have like if, if they don't have sufficient setup right Camille does have some setup but it going wide there's just no way that Nocturne can make up for that yeah definitely relying on mispositioning more in those longer mm -hmm. lanes uh, Pika Pika roaming mid potentially ward over the wall did may or may not have seen the ward placed yep okay they did Drake not up for another minute, and not that you would want to be killing a Drake at this point anyways. <laughs> yeah, neither bot lane damage. has priority. Yeah, Actually, as I'm saying that... See. Oh. Okay. Just getting some trades down still. Uh, bot lane is... Uh, AR's bot lane is pushed up uh, close to tower, but Sejuani is topside, and so they're not going to be able to punish it at all. I mean, they have so much vision. Even if Sejuani was here, they'd probably just walk it out for free. Um, and now they for sure know that Sejuani's top, so they're going to just keep pressuring this. They're going to uh, keep getting free farm, trying to build a CS lead here, but they're looking pretty even so far. Only a small difference. The E does land looking good uh, a lot of damage going on to vid there he's just gonna start farming again could be the re-engage from Javi doesn't look to go for it maybe E is still down okay looking great so far and obviously bot lane getting that first kill no action otherwise has happened since no kills going over they're playing it nice and safe uh don't want to uh go too hard pre 10 minutes they are looking to fight they're gonna keep looking for those catches i mean 
Thresh is always going to throw those Qs out. Oh. Alright, pizza they fiasco has been solved. Awesome. Okay, looking good. And they do have a massive CS lead, Plobe, oh, kind of... We'll see flashing because he thought the binding was going to be thrown. They are able to get that kill onto the Morgana, but Asol is roaming and is here ready to pick up some gold. Wow. But both kills go to the Nocturne. Still a very beneficial play. You are very happy with that if you are the side of Acid Rabbits. Yeah, that, that was such good calls. Uh, I, I, I would love to hear after the game... Um, if Acid Rabbits ends up winning, who calls for that roam, right? Because they're, they're getting cues thrown at them repeatedly. They're, you know, TSC's balling is looking to go on you at any point. They're just going to say, hey, they're pushing up on us. They're trying to get us, you know, come up. These are two free kills. We'll set them up for you, hand them to you on a platter. And Nocturne just sets, uh, you know, we'll slam it down and get the kill after that really, really good setup from the Swain Never Move. Um, and then obviously Morgana ends up going down, but, you know, two kills going over to your Nocturne and assists going over to your, uh, Aesol is definitely something you want to see. Do you ever think Never Move sounds like one of those, like, products that gets, like, a trademark and a little infomercial? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Early 2000s? Yeah, it's like, uh, Flex Introducing Seal. Never Move! Yeah, it's just, it's just Flex Seal. Billy Mays but, uh, here! Rest in peace, you beautiful man. <laughs> uh, I assume the uh, game sounds sounding good. I don't see anyone talking about yeah, it anymore. It okay. Uh, we'll see if the awesome. solo kill is able to come out. Flash forward, flash match. The Q. We'll be able to get out of there. Minion wave. Looks like uh, Cat Javier is pushing it in. Looks really, really good for a second. I mean, Vid one auto away from dying there. That could have been disastrous for him. Six. He is one Raptor off of it. If he had got had gotten a little more lane XP and that Sejuani gank had happened just now, mm -hmm. that would have been absolutely that's a, crazy. That's, the, that's the lane XP nerf right there. Saving Javi from that. Uh, yeah, lane XP being nerfed. Already making impact. Is level six potentially looking here on the top side? I would prefer he to did get you know, be counter ganking this ideally, but that way okay. you can get a two for one. Still a very happy play. Says one he doesn't want this. Oh, or does she? <laughs> Still deciding. <laughs> Goes down. Zaya ultimate comes oh. out, but, but the play goes wide, flashes backwards, but you're thinking to yourself, this is probably a dead Zaya. Flash is being blown on both sides, and the teleport comes in. I don't know that they'll be able to get anything back onto that onto Coco, but things across yeah. the map just going very well for the side of AR. But then yeah, it so... places a ward, does Michi see it? Barely able to flash out, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's it anyway. can go over walls. <laughs> Numbers advantage here for Acid Rabbits in the top lane, but still the HP advantage maybe on the side of the student council. Asol may be caught, but you know, dragon over wall. Dragon over wall. Yeah, that was a uh, a long, long two minutes of straight fighting. You love to see it. A uh... A nice little uh, slapper here. Everyone's just going to bat, trying to fight over and over. Uh, huge, huge play from Man Butts uh, and Morgana, timing that CC so well. Getting the never move into the W on Zaya, getting Zaya ult out early, and then having to then just eat a Morgana Q. Uh, securing the kill in that bot lane fight, that was just so, so well played. I'm a little bit surprised that we haven't seen a Drake attempt yet, but perhaps we will see that happen right now, now that Satanial is back on the map with not only some extra long swords, but boots of lucidity. They're all about to run into each other. And the chunk on the bot lane. Um, They're on the dragon. 
they may not know about the drake. There's a Mia ping going just based off of the people missing from lanes, and that drake is not low enough HP for you to really feel great in this situation. Not everybody can go to the wall. Centennial diving straight in. Man butts over the wall, DPSing the best he can. Centennial will go down. Aurelia picking up kills on the back side of the pit. Meanwhile, a little bit of fighting top side. Man butts flashing. How did he get over that wall? Oh, there was a blast cone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking really, really good for AR there. TSC wanted to try and sneak that. They got caught out when it was at 2k HP. Nocturnal going down on the Sejuani and Michi just going down before the uh, dragon was in smite range. So Nocturne ends up getting the steal. Uh, not what you want if you're a TSC fan, but you know it was a good thought process and AR just being really, really quick to notice. Hey, no one's on the map. Where uh, where could they possibly be? Maybe Dragon. I and the uh, they do things. sniff that out. Aurelia was able to pick up uh, a kill there and shut yeah. down, none, no less. So mm -hmm. perhaps Aurelia getting towards that Bork power spike where they will be able to murder anyone and everyone. Yeah, Defy also getting a second kill. Yeah, Aurelia actually ahead on gold compared to the Aesol, but Aesol's the one with the bounty. <laughs> Oh wait, bounty yeah. Any means, but... Yeah. Just the early bounty, I think, and uh, hasn't been reset since. Looking good so far for AR. You want to make sure that this ASOL either gets snowballed early, um, or has the ability to scale into the late game, and so far, Vid has had both. Uh, really, really well played from AR, they know exactly what they want. Um, they've had good early game pressure from the Nocturne and bot lane, obviously getting a bunch of good trades as well. They are opting to not make any map rotations to try and contest the Herald. That could have been a dead dragon, by the way. Yeah, that was really, really close on the queue. Just cutting some hair there. Thresh makes his uh, daily vacation trip back to bot lane <laughs> just to check how the water is see how warm just wants to take a check just wants to take a look just a little visit full information for tsc in the top lane so it's sejuani actually counter ganking this mordecai's comes out and it is two individual 1v1s inside the realm and outside of it but it looks like although a great counter gank attempt no kills will come of it a little bit of top yeah. lane pressure Maybe they will decide to drop the Herald while they have this huge HP advantage. Some Flash is coming out, mostly from the Thresh. This way Flash coming up momentarily. Yeah, really, really good timing on the... Who has oh. ultimate. Double TP actually being blown. We'll see what happens here on the back side of the play. Aurelian Soul ulti comes down and they are stuck there by the cosmic whatever it's called. The Nimbus sky's descent the rains down. Well, sky's descent, huge. They didn't know it was two TPs. They started at the same time. They uh, they just weren't ready for it. They they thought it was just the Camille coming up to clear wave, and little did they know, uh, skies were here to descend upon them, uh, and will end up being two kills. Going over to the Aurelian Soul. You love to see it. Vid super super happy so far in this game yeah i mean it, it's still a full 1k gold lead on this mordekaiser who has now finished their mythic yeah i mean 60 60 cs up right so i think the side lane is uh the way that you win this game if you are tsc you're mm -hmm. constant you, you really need to be starting to pick up these uh tier one turrets on either side and Maybe you would have liked to see the Herald saved for at the same time as the Dragon and drop it, give the Drake, just get yourself a lot of gold in this top side play to really cement uh, Mordekaiser's dominance so far in this game. But mm -hmm. And Plobe, I mean, obviously being 60 CS up right now has had a really, really uh, nice time in lane, but because he's had such a nice time in lane, he's been pushed up so far and... 
AR has been capitalizing on it, punishing the mistakes, the lack of vision that he always has in Tribrush, so they can get very, very close. And by the time that, you know, he's ready to start leaving, there's a Nocturne ulting him, there's a, an Asol being there, there's a Camille ult popping down, right? So they've just gotten punished at every turn. Clove obviously getting a ton of CS and we'll just keep splitting. I mean, he's gonna... Oh, they see him actually. If they're keeping track of the teleports, they should know that the Camille and Raelian Soul teleports are not up. So if Mordekaiser needs to, should be able to get down to this fight. Walking. Not far enough backwards. Looks like he will opt to not join the fight. In the meanwhile, Satanio getting caught by a nicely timed hook, but it is actually... Pika Pika that will pay the price. Swain Ultimate being casted and a lot of DPS coming out. Dragon seeing how much damage he can get through. Is a horse to flash over the wall while Swain dies in the Death Realm. Yeah, looks really, really good for uh, AR. I mean, they had the TP advantage, right? It became a 5v4 really, really fast. Pika the only one falling on TSC's side. Uh, so AR ends up falling, losing both of their bot lane there. Yeah, in the midst of that fight, we I guess we saw Glow uh, back up and try and pass the teleport. I don't know that they'll be able to catch anyone here. I think it's good it, to though. clear the mid wave before going back to Drake, because Sitaniel and Bid the mid are still chunked. I don't know that they will want to contest even if they could. Mitchie and Defy are also chunked though, so it could be a pretty even 5v5. <laughs> Oh. Setting up for another play here. Morgana actually caught. Spell Shield comes out at just the right time to dodge the stun, but that will not block the attack damage coming out. Satanial trying to kill Javier. Do they have the damage to do it? They do with the help of Swain. Nocturne Ultimate comes up at just the right time and will murder the Zaya here on the backside of the play. No ultimate ability available. Koka the Dragon extending the play with Extendo Reach. They're trying to get as many kills as they can on the backside. Hook lands and extends the play even further. Man Butt's caught, but they are turning back here onto the side of TSC. The Sejuani will be the one to pay. Camille Ulti comes back up and the Skies Descent. Maybe the Thresh going down here as well. PSC extending that fight over and over, but they did not want that fight. They should have honestly given it up. AR knowing their limits, knowing that they can keep pressing that. They saw the Mordekaiser try and kill, uh, the Mordekaiser instead try and kill the Swain, but they just don't have the damage. Uh, and they knew that they could just continue fighting it and we'll end up getting two more kills off of it. I mean, it is certainly very easy to continue, you know, being baited into those plays because it looks great at certain yeah. moments in time. And you see the advantage, you want to go for it. I mean, Javier must be feeling pretty strong here. Gonna maybe see if they can pick up a solo kill here on the man butt. Gonna opt not to, but perhaps if they stick around. Looks like there's some pings out. They knew Morgana was close, so they decided to just back off. Uh, and this Aurelian Soul is 8 and 0. Um, this Aurelian Soul has only lost one game in the BTL season so far. Uh, are we going to start banning it, or are we just going to keep letting teams get free wins because of Aurelian Soul? You know, the real tragic thing this game is that I think if uh, Pika Pika were on an Enchanter this game, uh. they would have a pretty clear path to victory with just buffing up the Aurelia to take over the fight mm -hmm. and kill. A soul. Yeah, I mean, Aurelia does, I mean, one-shot everyone on their team except for Swain and Camille, so if I really can see a really good angle on a flank at any point, uh, that could be a very dead dragon. Probably you're really late here coming to this place. Sejuani looks to engage, but they are totally on their own, perhaps setting themselves up for their own grave. Mordekaiser ultimate comes out. What's going on here? Satanio diving forward while Mordekaiser fights on the backside. Going to try and get as much damage as they can. They are able to get the Zaya Thresh Force to flash over the wall. The four-man group staying strong, and Mordekaiser not able to pick up any kills in the Death Realm, although it looks like the Aurelian Soul became very close to dying. Yeah. Unfortunate that you can't get that thousand gold bounty, but Mordekaiser continuing to fight here on the backside of the play. Root does not actually land on the Mordekaiser. I imagine that the E must be coming up soon, the pull. Does not land on the man butts, and the Thresh oh. just barely is not able to land the hook there. Javier maybe looking to extend the play, tanking turret, tanking another turret. Forced to flash out, and he will actually be going down for free there on the back side of the play. Just trying to reach and get as much as possible. 
Vid going to TP to reposition, see if they can follow these kills and maybe translate it into a bear. You might get it! That's a strong Bad dragon! Damage coming down, Look at the dragon able to pick up one of those, uh, or help, rather, because yeah. Asol is picking up just every single kill in this game. Yeah, I, uh... I guess what we're learning here is that... Asol's mid Asol good these extended long fights good. across a lot of terrain. Yeah, mid Asol good, top Asol bad is what I've learned from this game. This, I mean, every single fight, every single win condition that AR wanted has just worked. They uh, have won all the fights that they're looking for. They're they're punishing on every mistake that TSC is, you know, making these very small, small mistakes. I mean, taking these fights for just a little too long, overextending just a little too far, and AR capitalizing on every single one, just getting such a huge lead now, right? 6K, 6K gold ahead, looking really, really good, feeling great. You know, 11-0 Aurelian Soul pre-30 uh, pre minutes is... I mean, gonna be doing a lot, a lot of damage. So if you are TSC at this point, I think that all hope is not lost, but you really need to pivot the way that you're approaching these fights. Mm -hmm. You need to start focusing on the side lanes, because that is where you are still just a little bit stronger. That Mordekaiser has almost a full flame horizon onto the Camille. So you leave your team to try and wave clear as best you can, and let the Aurelia and the Mordekaiser push up in the side lane. See if they can pick up some 1v1s. And that looks to be exactly what they are doing at this point. I don't know that uh, AR has a very good siege. Just gonna be able to chip at the turrets using their Baron, and that's kind of gonna be the extent of it. They're a little bit scared to force any plays, because if they are committing just a little bit, the Sky's Descent doing a lot of damage onto the Mordekaiser, that will just be a free kill for the Aurelian Soul. Yeah. I mean, no MR on the, uh, on Plobe here, on this Mordekaiser. I mean, you're just gonna take all that damage. Got hit, uh, got, uh, unfortunately got caught, uh, oh! Actually. Maybe looking for the play here. A little bit overzealous, but still putting the, the fear of God into TSC. <laughs> Ocean Drake coming I mean... up in just four seconds. They may wait for this last minion wave or decide to turn directly towards the Ocean Drake. But Nimbus has hit timer so many two man E's. Still has about a quarter at this point. I, Man Butts has hit the most two minis I've ever seen in a game, just back to back to back, over and over. It's looking really, really good. I mean, they're getting another objective. They have all three dragons. Um, of course, the and then obviously getting the only Baron in the game so far. Uh, they're just controlling every objective. Did feel it. The gust, the little breeze. Yeah, the, the little breeze on the backside of that <laughs> And he says, ooh! No Baron available anymore. Um, I don't know that they will really be able to siege without doing a proper dive. Surely that Nocturnal is not up, right? Uh, um, yes it is. I mean, now it is, right? It's... But... Okay, I guess maybe it doesn't get a full cooldown. <laughs> uh, I I do wonder. I think they could have sieged for, I mean, a little bit more. Your ace, as long as your Aurelian Soul is there, you have really really good siege power. But I mean, Aurelian Soul wasn't there for the vast majority of the time, um, yep, while uh, Aster Abbas was sieging. So. Yeah. They will opt to potentially just extend the game a little bit and get a secure Baron here in a couple of minutes, assuming nothing. All, all goes according to plan. Raskotrug uh, pointing out that uh, AR does not just have three dragons, but they do have four. Oh yeah, that's my. That's honestly, that's on me. That's my bad. That's so true. Oh. TSC looking for a pick. The hook does not land, although I don't know that anything would have happened there, even if it had. Mordecai's yeah, a lot of AR. Which is possible, but Camille going in very early. Asol coming in as well. It is TSC, potentially, that is caught, even, even though they thought they had a Camille walking into their grasp. 
Nocturne dashing way over the map here, and it looks like the Mordekaiser will just barely get out. Mambut's gonna be able to pick up a kill, all, just barely not here on the backside. Globe not able to get a kill onto Coco. Just feels like every single attempt at a play is not resulting in what you want. Defy Insight may be caught here between a rock and a hard place. A kill finally going onto this Camille, and. Yeah, I mean, it, it's That's so hard. That's smacking them with the wallet at this point. Yeah, it's so hard for TSC to do anything. They have a dragon in their top lane. They have a dragon in their mid lane. I mean, what do they even do? How do they counter that? There's just nothing that they, they have the chance. I mean, they, they obviously got a little, uh, unfortunately, baited there by the Camille. Uh, and ends up looking... Uh, Looking really good for Acid Rabbits, coming in, collapsing, having their Morgana Swain walk through that jungle, uh, and then Aurelian Soul obviously just flying in from the middle of nowhere and uh, just getting, you know, three kills. No problem. I'm trying to think of how to approach this next fight. I think you push mid, walk in through mid, because you are thinking that your jungle is probably warded and try to just, like, full send it on the first person who looks pickable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll say, Astrobus has been playing around their Aurelian Soul pick so incredibly well, like but let's also say... Here. Oh? Ult the Swain. I'm not sure who's going to win in this death realm. Isolation Q damage does a lot, yeah. but Mambutz does have a stopwatch available. Camille going to be ready to get the kill there on the backside of the Mordekaiser ult. I say backside yeah. a lot. E even when behind, right? Plobe, Plobe is actually 1 in 6, and he still solos the Swain. Uh, Swain obviously having that stopwatch to save uh, to save him, um, and then Camille uh, going to end up getting the stun, so they get that clean 2v1. At oh, oh. Man. <laughs> I mean, just showing off how much damage you have at that point. I Looking great. The may come up just before the dragon. Yeah, Baron's dead. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh Recall, exactly dragon, what you want to see. Take the soul, win one more fight, end the game. Yep, yep. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty clear what Ast Rabbit's game plan is from here on out. They, they're gonna get that. Uh, they're gonna get that soul. Um, TSC. I mean, they can't really contest this, right? They can't walk into them to fight this. It, it will end up being a uh, pretty doomed for them if they end up going for that. They have all ults up except for the Aurelian Soul ult, but they're so far ahead that they might not even need it at this point, right? They can't walk in. They're going to secure the soul here, and it won't matter. They can't even look for the steal. Just killing it on spawn. They're going to get the reset, and then looks like they will probably just push mid after that. I wouldn't blame TSC for feeling demoralized at this point. <laughs> it was a tough one. It was a really, really tough one. People just keep letting Asol get through pick ban. Just, just ban it. Just ban it. Uh, we have another game coming up here pretty, pretty soon. Uh, let's see if they end up picking or banning Asol as well. Fingers crossed. Yeah, more ASO gameplay. Let's go. Oh man, this uh, looks like the game-ending push that they're looking for. Yeah, they can't even walk up to protect the the tower. Aurelian Soul E just so so big. That black hole is not something you want to walk into. Um, and I mean. Vid has piloted this this Aurelian Soul so incredibly well. I mean, they're not even 40 minutes, or they're not even 30 minutes into the game, and he has almost 400 Stardust stacks. That's so so good. Oh, I mean, they just can't really initiate these fights properly. Yeah, the Zayat's gonna burn that. They don't have there. the damage. Aurelian Soul ultimate knocks up two. Now it is the Swain who is going to win inside of the Mordekaiser ulti. Love to see it. Gotta see the end of the game here. 
Yeah, this uh, this will be GG. I mean, really, really well played from Acid Rabbits taking this win. Uh, TSC giving it their best shot, but they just couldn't handle two dragons in the game. Acid Rabbits getting that W over TSC. Uh, really, really well played. Sky's Descent is going to, of course, secure that last uh, team fight, just doing infinite damage and knocking up everyone. And uh, that's just, uh, that's ASOL gameplay. All right. Who do you think is your MVP for this game? Honestly, that's tough, right? I think I think so many of those successful plays are uh, pulled out from Satanial, having really, really good uh, calls, always being there to gank and punish Plobe in the top lane. Um, always helping out the ASOL when they got the roam bottom as well. Uh, looking really good. Um, I do wonder... Uh, they they have four wins. They have one person who has not been interviewed. I'll go ask who it is. Deal. Yeah. Aurelian Soul Gameplay. Okay, give me just a moment here. We have one that will be transferring over. Oh, we have to drag them in, potentially. Oh no, they we don't have perms to do that. We may have to hop to another show. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the wrong casting couch. There we go. Hello! Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome, Centennial. Congrats on your dub versus TSC. Thank you. How are you feeling coming mm -hmm. out of the game? I'm feeling a bit great. Uh, it was a somewhat of a grudge match, I guess you could say. On TSC last season, I uh, was hoping to play with uh, PJ this this season. He and I duoed a lot towards the end of Season 8. And then when Season 9 rolls around, he tells me he requested Mitchie Poo as his jungler. So I was like, damn, got to gotta get the respect points back by <laughs> giving, him, giving him the Nocturne treatment. But um. Yeah, feeling great, because if we hadn't won this game, we would have plummeted to 7th or 8th because of the tiebreakers, and now that we won, I think we certify 3rd, 4th, so good times. Yeah, it looked great. I mean, you guys played fantastic. I was really, really impressed. I actually specifically wanted to call um, about a certain um, play, or ask about a certain play. You guys had their uh, bot lane shoved up, um, and you and Aurelian Soul just roam bottom, get the two free kills. Who's making those calls, right? Who's saying, hey, these are two free kills in the bot lane. Let's just run it down. So that was actually, like, funnily enough, normally, you know, kind of I'm doing a lot of the rotational calls early game. But that was Vid and I just on the same wavelength. Like, I walked over to that blast cone being like, I'm going to hover here in case they shove up. And mm -hmm. suddenly I noticed a soul flying over the blue wall and coming right. Like, that was... Comically enough, just like he and I on the same exact page of like, we can get in on this gank very fast if they collapse. And sure enough, like you saw, it worked out. And I think we traded three mm -hmm. for one on that play. But um, yeah, funnily enough, it was just him and I thinking the same thing at the same time. Yeah, that was awesome. That 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 looked great. It was a super, super good call. Um, I loved seeing that. I mean, I think that's really the point where you're sitting there and you're like, oh, yeah, OK, this Aurelian Soul and Nocturne are just going to steamroll this game right there's no play that they could really make at this point that will i mean obviously there's plenty of chances to make mistakes but at that point you guys look like you're in the driver's seat right you're you're making every play you're being proactive you're getting this aurelian soul head you're getting your win cons in you know with this nocturne getting ahead early as well um yeah, and nocturne, uh, it just looks great yeah nocturne a soul i think is a pretty potent combo with nocturne turning off the lights and then as you probably saw a handful of times, the big a soul ult coming yeah. over the top. You don't know where the a soul's flying in uh... over what wall. Where is his? Where are his star? Where is his a black hole? And so it's just like it enables a soul to kind of like fire with impunity in team fights. And um, we played against the Aurelia matchup last week, and we kind of figured that if Nock goes on the Aurelia and forces her W out, so she's standing still, it's a free a soul ult, and it's sort of a Vid and I have practiced this combo a bit, and it feels it feels nice when it works. 
awesome. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Who who is making these uh, in your pick band phases, right? Is it everyone's chipping in or is there a voice being like, wow, ASO looks really good here? Is it just Vid going, just, just you know, calling the shot going, yo, pick me ASO. I'll gap him. I'll gap him yeah. mid. It doesn't matter. Just blind it. I'm surprised so, it fell um, through as far as it did. Yeah, <laughs> we, were, we were concerned on red side because ASOL, we like it on vid. Vid likes it, and it's obviously, even with the nerf, still very strong. Mm -hmm. we're, we're red side, but Javi's been out of the country for two months, hasn't put any time on ASOL. We're like, ooh, PJ could pilot it, and they could swap mid top, but PJ hasn't piloted it. So we ran the risk of, like, they're not going to take it. And... Vid said, you know, the we didn't ban it because Vid said, I'm confident if they lock in an ASOL first time that he was going to be fine playing into it and we would have been just fine. So we trusted that. Mm -hmm. And so for Pac-Man, it's a lot of, I typically come in with like the, this is what the enemy team typically prioritizes and picks and what they like to take and kind of what do we have in our pools that we're comfortable playing into what they might like, what do we want to get rid of? So I come in more with like, this is what we anticipate the enemy team taking and then let the the team decide like how comfortable we are we playing into the matchups we're okay letting through. But um awesome. Team effort. Yeah. Were you were you worried at any point when that Irelia started getting very big? I mean, Hobby looked so good on that Irelia. Uh, and there were some fights around the uh the bottom mid brush um where ha where Hobby's just jumping on your back line, just killing two people. Yeah. Uh, there was one time where he overextended just a little bit but he looked really good and there's a lot of times where this Irelia is just going to one shot everybody and uh was there a point where you were worried about okay Javi's looking that, big what that was do? that was the second or third dragon fight I remember because this was the one that dragged on like we fought then we went to go grab mid tower and they pulled off and then we all reset for dragon again and we fought and we won the second go around and I remember Javi oh. was pushing bot we engaged the fight and then we knew Javi was rotating up, and I think the problem was Mord kidnapped somebody, and then um, Coco wasn't there, you know, super fast, so the problem ended up being we just didn't have the damage to kill anybody, and it allowed Javi to get there, and yeah, once the Aurelia got there, like you said, he immediately ultis onto the back line and starts tearing people up, but luckily, I think the only reason we, did, we ended up getting that dragon was... The rotation mid and kind of forcing the split call of, uh, do we take the dragon or do we stop their mid take, and we luckily, um pulled them off, and then we were able to turn the fight around the second go-around when the Aurelia wasn't on the flank. Awesome. Yeah, well, I, I love to hear it. I mean, yeah, Drew, do you have any other uh, questions? Uh, do you have any shout-outs for today, Satanial? Um, Shout-out to the team. I think this was, like, a super cohesive game. I think they all, like, everybody came together, and everybody, like, butts in Elise bot lane, like... I am astonished to see, you know, kind of Swain Morgana. Like, it feels like that's going to be really hard to play into to Thrush Zaya. You know, it's hard to hit necessarily the Swain Claw and the Morgana bind, yet they were doing very well in that lane despite constantly being shoved in, so that was impressive. Vid, I mean, my, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about a 14-0-7 scoreline on ASOL. And then um, Coco, weak side king. Uh, I, did he end the game with over 100 CS? I can't <laughs> tell from this screen, but... um. <laughs> Dude was there and sacrificing his, you know, lane pressure yeah. to be there for every play that we needed him and getting us ahead and being a huge component of, like, setting things up with um, a lot of times he was burning the Zaya ult for Vid and I to just follow over the top and blow her up. So, like, huge props to him for being willing to kind of, like, take the L and still help us win the game in the end. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, Coco uh, looked great on that, and and you also, like, w watching Plobe kind of, okay, so just a little bit, Plobe a little bit just abused Coco in the top lane over and over, um, like you said, eventually getting, like, a 60 K uh, a sixty CS lead, um, even pushing up to 100, yeah, he, right? He got, yeah, he got flame, Coco got Flame Horizon, he called it out himself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but even then, like, you're there every single time to punish Plope for overextending. So even though he's going down in CS, he's getting you super ahead, um, and it worked out at, uh, almost every time, right? Yes, he's going down in CS, but you're looking good. You're getting gold, good ults top. He's setting up uh, for Vid and you, uh, and even the Swain just getting freebies over and over and over. Yeah, Plope, Plope played the, the knock. The, oh, goodness, who's reporting me? Too good, nice. Uh, no, Co uh, Plob played it really well because there were one or two times I went topside and he only ulted me one of the times, but the one time I did, he 
kept just smacking me in the head with his Q, being like, blow your spell shield, because I'm going to ulti you. And sure enough, he was just doing enough damage that I was like, oh crap, I have to use spell shield, or this man's just going to chunk my ass. And then he immediately ultis me after. It's a game of chicken, and Coco, or and Plo probably knows I play knock well enough that like I can time the spell shield to his ulti. And he's like, I'm just going to smack you in the head and make you use it. And then he uh, he nearly got me there, but luckily I was able to get back to the tower. But he played that well, knowing it's a game of chicken, and he baited it out of me and uh, got the W on me there. But Yeah, awesome. Well, yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of respect for them. I appreciate you coming in for the interview. Thanks for the wonderful game. You guys are super fun to watch. I can't wait to see you in playoffs. Yeah, thank you guys for uh, spectating the game, commentating. I'm going to go back and watch your stellar commentary, but um, oh, looking yeah? forward to uh, look forward to playoffs. Awesome. Thanks so much. Peace out. Thanks, well, fellas. Our next game tonight is going to be coming up here shortly. It may have already yeah. started, even. No, uh, they're not even in draft yet. I'm okay. inviting you to the lobby. Yeah. Well, it's coming up shortly. Um, I believe we're going to terminate the stream and have it come back up so that Pentamasta can stream. Or, no, that's Decker. He changed his name in the Discord. <laughs> All right. See you shortly. See you shortly.